Well, on day two of these hearings, the crowd is a little thinner. It's certainly more partisan. There's a clear majority here today in favour of gay marriage. But, of course, the only opinions that really matter are those of the nine justices inside. And once again today, we've had an intriguing glimpse of their thinking. At issue this time, the Clinton-era Defense of Marriage Act, or DOMA, which denies federal tax and pensions benefits to same-sex wedded couples, even in states where gay marriage is legal. In court, several of the justices expressed concern that this was a case of federal law trampling on states' rights. You are at real risk of running in conflict with what has always been thought to be uh, the essence of the state police power, which is to regulate marriage, divorce, custody. And so you were really diminishing what the state has said is marriage. You're saying, no, state, there are two kinds of marriages, the full marriage and then the sort of skim milk marriage. <laughs> That memorable phrase was directed at a lawyer for congressional Republicans who stand alone in defending DOMA. As a recent convert to gay marriage, President Obama has disowned the controversial law, but his administration will continue to enforce it unless and until the court strikes it down. When the hearing ended, we heard from the 83-year-old poster child for change, Edie Windsor. I am today an out lesbian. Okay, who just sued the United States of America, which is kind of overwhelming for me. Edie married her long-term partner, Thea, in 2007. But when Thea died two years later, Edie was saddled with a six-figure bill for inheritance tax that would not have applied had she been married to a man. On the steps of the court, she thanked the justices. I thought we were all very respected, and, uh, and, and I think, I think... It's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> so after two days of hearings, it's pretty clear that the court is not just divided, as you'd expect, but also conflicted about how boldly, how broadly to rule on this issue. In the words of Justice Anthony Kennedy, he and his colleagues are in uncharted waters and we'll know in a few weeks how far they're prepared to go. Steve Kingston, BBC News, at the US Supreme Court.